Oh, okay, perfect. It's recording now. All right, uh, so it is 12 o'clock, so I will just quickly start. I'll introduce myself first. Uh, so my name is Jasmine Wilson, uh, and I am the Indigenous Programs and Community Engagement Coordinator at the Museum of Vancouver. It's a very new role for myself. I, um, I also would like to virtually welcome you to the, to the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. I myself come from the Musqueam Nation and have ancestral ties to Squamish Nation and ancestral ties to the Weiwakai Nation that's located in the Kukwakawak territory. So I'd just like to welcome you. Uh, and I would also like to welcome uh, the two panelists that we have here today, the two co-hosts. Um, they are both sisters and it's a great honor for me to introduce you today. Um, so I have, I have Annalie Boyd Good and Sophia Seaward Good. <laughs> Just want to make sure I got that right. Uh, and they're the designers of iLalem, the Good House of Design. Uh, and their webinar will be going to explore the concept of Indigenous first and the importance of supporting Indigenous businesses. So without further ado, I'll pass it on over to Annalie and Sophia. It's Quitawile, CMCIA, it's Duboelial, Atana Saleloch. Hello, my respected people and elders. Ah, Siam Nasokwen, Siam Nasiaya, Siam Nashwalikwa, Anthapa, Sophia, Tanitsen Alk, Nanemo. I'll do mine. Okay, Anthapa Onali, Tana Honitam Nasquish. Onali. <laughs> Sorry, Antipat Anneli. Tana Easton Ach Snenemo. It Klamoch Ach Stotlo and Lyaxen. So, hello everybody. I'm Sophia. This is my sister Anneli. Um, I just wanted to greet everybody in our traditional language. Uh, so, we are from Nanaimo or Snenemo territory. We are on Indian Reserve number three coming to you live for this webinar. And our roots are from Chehalis as well as uh, Belbees Island in the Lyaxon area. We are super excited to be here today to talk about Indigenous First and the importance of Indigenous uh, fashion in mainstream culture. And I hope you can hear us well with our masks on. Um, my sister and I do live in different houses, so we thought it was important to go ahead and wear them. Uh, following the guidelines that our province has set out. So. Mm -hmm. I think we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, so we are sisters, designers, directors of Ait Lalem. I'm Anneli and Sophia. We're a second generation Coast Salish design house. And we are the daughters of William and Sandra Good from Snanemo. We are also verified Spotify artists. We record our own music with Hulkaminum language. And uh, we do work alongside our parents um, as well as involve the children in the family. So sometimes there are four generations, three to four generations working on projects with us. And um, we won a BC Achievement Indigenous Business of the Year Award in 2018. So that's a little bit about Ait Lalem, the Good House of Design. And next screen. <laughs> so what we do, uh, we create really wearable art. So we absolutely love sharing our history, our culture, uh, the revitalization of the Halkaminam art form or the Coast Salish style um, in a diverse array of clothing. We actually make sizes from extra small to 3X, and we have done custom orders that are um, even up to like a 5X, or we'll, we'll make anything for anyone, basically, is what it comes down to. It doesn't matter size. It doesn't matter background. We, we make wearable, shareable artwork clothing. It's also super important for us to make sure that we are reducing our environmental footprint. So we really focus on utilizing eco-friendly fabric fabrics um, and we manufacture locally. So everything is made within BC in the most respectful way to make sure that we are doing our part for the environment and sustainability. I think that is also part of our teachings to make sure that we are using every part of it, uh, anything appropriately. 
And in the process of making our clothing, um, we are dedicated to documenting Coast Salish art, culture, history, music, and all of it as the entire embodiment of the traditional lifestyle in any way that we can. So we have artwork in all of our garments and Hokaminum language in our music. And we make sure that we digitize and document things so that it's all recorded for the next generation. When doing that, we also follow really strict protocols set out by our father, William Good or Stichinichin. Um, so we have a lot of Halkaminam traditions that we must follow, making sure that our, for, our art form is retold correctly because it is a story. It, is, um, it has rules and guidelines that have to be followed. So when we're making the clothing, we are making sure that you are wearing a true piece of history that isn't abstracted. And then in that storytelling comes the music and um, the music tells a story. So you have the visual aspect of storytelling, you have the audio, and this is all part of what would have been passed on through oral traditions and visual art. And this is something that we follow with uh, what we do with our company. So I guess we can go to the next slide. <laughs> so here is our teacher, our father, um, he's taught us who we are, where we come from, the importance of embracing who we are. Uh, he is a really super supportive dad when it comes to teaching us uh, how to do things and what we're allowed to do, um, what we're allowed to change. He is a master carver. He's been studying carving since the 70s, but he was actually told that he would be a storyteller and he was trained for that position. Um, and that was uh, from, William Good, his grandfather, just to differentiate the two of them. And um, from a very young boy, he was taken out daily and taught oral history until he had a perfect recall. So he carries a lot of information and history and stories. And then he became the traditional Coast Salish uh, master carver that revitalized the style from this region because he knew the history and he knew the stories and he realized that the stories were carved into the artwork. So he set out a life goal to revitalize the Halkaminum art form in our region. And um, that is what he is known for in our area. And um, he's also a singer and drummer and, and carries songs. So we're extremely fortunate to have him as uh, a full-time elder and artist um, with anything we want to do, he's there for us. And he's been teaching us since we were very young. So. In a lot of cases, it's really natural for us to do what he's taught us to do. And then we just make sure that we're doing it right. So he'll let us know if we um, should change anything or, or what we're doing, if we need to do anything different. And then you can see that he owned a business with our mom, Sandra Morehouse Good, and he is our feature artist alongside our brother, Joel Good, who has taken up the carving tradition from our dad. Next slide. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so our mother is Sandra Morehouse Good. Uh, she's the original designer of Ayayitmet Coast Salish clothing line in the 1990s. So her and our dad met, um, I guess in the 70s and they were friends and she actually taught him how to paint and use, uh, to mix colors. And then they got together and had me and they really started to collaborate on artwork back in the 80s where they've done uh, pottery, painting, uh, clothing. They've made everything. They've, they've made like melt and wool capes with hand carved silver buttons. And they made um, pottery in the eighties where they etched designs that looked almost like petroglyphs into the, into the pottery. They had so many collaborations and so many different art forms and their work is so diverse. It, we, we can't even keep up to what they did <laughs> in their career time. We try really hard. And so far there's our brother and us and like it takes all of us kids just to try to keep up to what our parents did ahead of us. 
And I think one of the most special things about doing what we're doing with our clothing line and our learning is that this business actually allows us to take the time to spend with our parents who are in the 70s. And it's really allowing us to figure out more who we are, what we're allowed to do, and really learning our culture, our history, our past, and being able to share it with everyone. And I, I think it's important to note that their work was in a pre-digital era. And we talk about this a lot because um, when you look back at their body of work, you actually have to, we had to go to collectors to view original pieces. And we don't have a lot of photos and we, we didn't have the digitization that we have. And now everything goes online. So it's important for us to be that bridge between their generation and the next generation to say, hey, we know that they did that. We have to find that piece. We have to get an image of it or explain it or have them teach us how to make something like that. And that's a lot of uh, what we do with our clothing is we are very heavily influenced by what they did. Next slide. <laughs> So here we're just going to share with you our Yachala Salsilton uh, Eagle Spindle Roll Fall 2020 collection. So we, uh, during, well, we hit the pandemic and everything shut down. So we were originally going to air our next collection in Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto, which has gone online. Um, so we decided to showcase it in a music slash fashion video. We had a lot of fun showcasing who we are, what we do and our next season of clothing, which is available now. So we're gonna go ahead and play that for you. Um, and then just so that everybody knows the, the different people, there are some models uh, from our community, but with COVID, we had quite serious restrictions. At that time, it wasn't really shut down, but we thought, well, we might as well bring our own family in, uh, which we had thoughts to do anyway, but COVID really pushed us to reel in all the teenagers and everything. So you'll find a lot of the um, next generation of children from our family. Um, there are four generations on the video and you'll see that. And it's also with our new music that is also available. So we can go ahead and play the video. No sound.
the next one. Did we skip a slide? Yes, there we go. <laughs> All right, and then can you see us? Someone raised their hand. Oh, they can see us, they said. Okay. Oh, I don't know what happened here. There we go. So we have to go back in the slide. There. And then we have a couple of questions, I think. Raised hands. Uh, I think that was for if they could. Okay, so everybody can see us. Perfect. Let's move on. I hope you enjoyed our little video that we did. It was a lot of fun to make. It was also super stressful. <laughs> Um, but I think it really showcases who we are and what we do in the most respectful way for women. Um, we absolutely love dressing and doing what we're doing. It gives us a really, really great sense of who we are and just responsibility. So let's move on to Indigenous first. So this is not necessarily a new idea, but it is a newer hashtag. Um, so it's something that we've been working on with a whole bunch of Indigenous designers to really speak to making sure that you're purchasing Indigenous first. So what does it mean? Um, is it possible to get our screen to show? I don't know if that is possible, but we can't see ourselves just so anyways. <laughs> okay. Indigenous first is um, seeking out and purchasing from an Indigenous maker as the primary supplier of Indigenous art and culture items, or can be contemporary made products. Um, and these products can be items like clothing, jewelry, bath and beauty products, housewares, carvings, prints, beadwork, the list goes on. Um, but there are Indigenous makers who make these items culturally, they make them in their communities, and it's really important to support them before any mass produced products or um, if you can support an Indigenous maker first, then you look at if it's not available, okay, is there um, another maker of some kind that makes licensor offshore? And if you can, <laughs> you should try to support the Indigenous maker first. Another aspect of this is um, every area and region has its own style. And in a lot of cases, the style from that region isn't represented in its own region. And what that means is that if you're operating a store or there's a buyer and they're in Coast Salish territory, then they should try to support and they should support a Coast Salish maker and um, bring in their products in the community in the territory that they operate in. Next slide. So authenticity, how do we identify an authentic maker? Who are they, where are they, and how do they do it? So first of all, just as we opened our presentation with who we are, our uh, traditional territory that we're on, how we, how we learned, um, who teaches us. So most Indigenous people, especially in the coastal area, will always identify who they are, where they come from, their family ties, their lineage, where their roots come from. Well, this also goes with authentic and Indigenous uh, makers. And and then in that identification is what style do they practice um, and how do they receive their teachings so in our case we acknowledge where our teachings come from our teachings come from our father and then they go through uh, family lineage and it's important to identify where the information comes from where the art comes from where the teachings come from because a lot of the products are based on teachings um, and artwork and, and um, various aspects of traditional lifestyle. So how do you find out about that? Most people, as Sophia mentioned, will, will state where they're from, who they are, where they come from, and how they receive their teachings. 
So I think another aspect is this isn't um, an issue of live quantum. So uh, we don't necessarily follow the con con colonial laws that states what makes us Indigenous. And if you are an Indigenous maker, you often refer to um, the ties that uh, well that you have versus um, like just looking at uh, the, as Sophie said the colonial definition of what an Indigenous person is. So that can include makers of mixed heritage. Our family is an example of a mixed heritage and blended family. Um, and because we're a family and we are all treated the same in our family as siblings and children, then we are people that make authentic products with our family's artwork. And um, there are a lot of other people that have mixed heritage. So that's an aspect of it as well. Next. <laughs> so this is a big to topic. Um, it is. So, sorry, something happened on the caption. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is cultural appropriation? Um, well, I think it can, there's a lot of gray, well, not gray areas, but there's a lot of areas where it is hard to know if something is being appropriated. Um, I think this has happened to Indigenous people a lot in the last um, hundreds of years. It is something that should be talked about. It is okay to talk about it. And it is important to learn about it because it, it makes sure that we are all following the same guidelines. So um, I think Annalise is going to talk about the Sea Alaska as an example. Yeah, so so this is a prime example of a cultural um, cultural appropriation in the fashion industry. Um, C. Alaska Heritage filed a, an unprecedented lawsuit against Neiman Marcus in April 2020 um, for using the Raven's Tail pattern. And uh, I just quoted something from the article with the link there. The lawsuit, lawsuit also alleges the fashion company violated copyright laws. The coat looks similar to the robe protected by copyright and created by the late master weaver Clarissa Rizal. So this is an issue of there's legal copyright. Um, there are copyright laws with artwork and various other um, things that people make. But this is also an issue of um, violating cultural law. It's culturally not OK to utilize someone else's family design or artwork. And like, for instance, we would never make something with um, Clarissa Rizal's pattern. Um, it's, it's not okay. The only way that we could make something is if someone gifted us something and allowed us to use something, but this is not, it's, it's just not okay to do this sort of thing. And so it's, uh, it's amazing that Sealaska Heritage filed the lawsuit and it just shows the importance and the significance of standing up for traditional artwork and uh, traditions that are passed on through many generations. Uh, and uh, just for those of you that don't really know the meaning of cultural appropriation, so uh, cultural appropriation is the adaption of an element or elements of one culture or identity by members of another culture or identity. This can be controversial when members of dominant culture appropriate from disadvantaged minority cultures. Um, so just in talking to, speaking to what Annalie was talking about with cultural appropriation, there is a lot of laws, um, territorial laws that allow us to do things and not do things. And this, this goes, I think, for almost every Indigenous culture, and we all follow those. A lot of us will go to our parents and our grandparents to make sure that we're using things that we can share that are allowed to be um, used by us or, and shared and worn. And I think, uh, so we make sure that we don't culturally appropriate as well as misinform people. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Can I wear it? We can't tell you how many times we are asked this question and other makers are asked this question. If I'm non-Indigenous, can I wear 
this artwork? Can I purchase it? Um, and this would be anything from clothing to artwork in your home, jewelry. And the answer is yes, 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 yes. please, please wear. wear it. <laughs> so uh, I think when wearing it appropriately, so say for instance, making sure you know who the maker is, where they come from, it creates a level of knowledge and understanding and really that decolonizing um, Indigenous artwork. So it's so important that you purchase Indigenous first uh, because you know that it's okay for you to wear it. And it's also just understanding who we are, loving the, the culture that we come from. It shows that we it doesn't just belong in a museum. You can literally be a walking museum. So please support local indigenous artisans and make sure that you do your part on making sure you know who they are where they come from um and it really honors the artist too um it's it shows a lot of respect when you pick an artist who is or a maker who is following cultural rules and guidelines it is um, quite challenging to operate under those in the sense that you have to make sure that everything you do is appropriate and uh, it's really rewarding when people understand it and appreciate it and enjoy wearing it. And it, it's really important to have allies for the future um, of the cultural and economic systems too, because an example is our family um, and the multi-generational impact it has in our family. If our parents weren't supported by the collectors that purchased off of them in the many years that they had collectors and buyers and customers, we wouldn't be here. And that's the reality of it is that their work funded their research. It funded their ability to bring their kids in and teach their kids. We were at trade shows and fashion shows. <laughs> well, and also Boots. like just looking at what our dad has been able to do, uh, revamp, revitalizing the traditional Hulk Aminum Coast Salish art form if we didn't have supporters, that art form would be lost. So the fact that we are continuing that and that this business is allowing us to continue such an important part of our history. Um, so please make sure some, I don't think buying one set of earrings or one dress, I don't know if you really understand what you're actually allowing to happen economically and culturally for that person. It is so important because that is their livelihood, it is passing on those traditions, mm -hmm. it is keeping everything alive. If you look in the photo here too, this is our niece. And um, this is an example of, it goes from grandfather through to us, and then we bring our niece in, three generations. We wouldn't be able to do this without that support and without the work that our parents did. And the next generation will not be able to do it without us. Yay, we see I have several authentic pieces of art and jewelry and I'm not Indigenous. Don't hide them. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy them, embrace them. Learn about them. <laughs> there, there's just so much to collecting uh, original pieces that the artist is selling you. That artist takes that carving. They work so hard to master their art form. There are years and years and years. You know, you can watch a carver and sometimes they're fast when they're really experienced. And you say, oh, wow, that's pretty fast. But you have to think there's like 20, 30 years behind that skill. And to be able to appreciate them and honor them by hanging up their artwork in your house. I mean, that's really important. Next slide. <laughs> Cultural rules. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hard subject. There are there are a lot of rules. And family rules. So I think depending on which area you're in, um, the rules are all pretty similar, but we do follow a lot of them. So we're not making ceremonial uh, work to wear. Uh, we are following with our father's traditions and cultural teachings um, of even coming into the way the art is shown and how it's showcased, how it's drawn. There's rules with that. And we follow all the rules that says that we're not allowed to um, take, take a form out of our art 
or give you abstract art um, because we're actually getting the full artist rendition with all of its parts because every part we're frozen okay uh let's see we're, we're good fine. okay <laughs> The joys of technology, oh. you don't know what it's going to do. We're also in a rural part of Nanaimo. Uh, so our internet is not always the best. We have the high speed, but it does like to um, just well, go away. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yes, we the share the recording will be available, I believe later. Um, so basically, we honor traditional practices with what we do we have traditional guidelines um, and rules art rules um, even the storytelling and the music we make sure with our dad that there are things that we're allowed to share before we share them so these are just some of the cultural rules that um, a maker or artist that follows um, you know the people that do that they end up making culturally appropriate products and I think we also make sure that we're not culturally appropriating. So that is something that we also have to make sure that we are following ourselves as Indigenous people, because there are certain rules that apply to certain regions. Uh, so I can't go and give you an idea from another, like a... A neighboring community yeah. even, or... Um, our family. Some, or something that doesn't belong to our family. And um, so that's how we operate under those rules. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Next slide. Are we frozen again? There we go. Okay, so we have some slides we can go through. Um, just examples. These are some of our readyware pieces. The artwork is by our dad, William Good, and our brother, Joel Good. Sorry, we're reading a, a question. Um, so I think that shirts, um, this is like my personal opinion, but I also wear shirts with slogans. Um, I have a beautiful red shirt that ha uh, for the missing and murdered indigenous women that has an indigenous face with the hand mark on it. It is an indigenous maker. Um, but I think that is also still, I think you can still wear that um, as long as it um, is manufactured by an indigenous person. So, I mean, the slogans. I think the slogan probably should pertain to you as well. Like mm -hmm. I, I think that if that's how you identify and you can uh, substantiate that, um, but it's hard to say because we don't really make clothing like that. So we ours is for everybody. So well, may, maybe in some cases, you might want to check with the company. There's also a lot of shirts out there, I believe with the Cree writing on it. And I think that is actually really important to purchase because it's supporting language revitalization. So I think as long as you are okay with what you're supporting and what revitalization is coming out of that, then yes, please purchase it as long as it, as it is Indigenous first. I mean, if you're purchasing it, it does mean something to you. It means that you want to support that. And that's okay. Right. If you're and, supporting a movement of something. And opinions will differ on that from region to region. But I, I think um, also in an Indigenous business, you can often just ask the maker and say, hey, is this okay for me to wear if I'm non-Indigenous? And they will let you know. Yeah, I think really what it comes down to is if there is a question about it and you're unsure, I would read what Sophie said, reach out to that individual. Um, I know that this is a topic that comes up in different areas because someone sent me an article recently um, that was talking about mob 
clothing um, for that's New Zealand, right? Or Australia? Yeah, sorry. Um, and the, the company over there, they actually had little stickers that set that differentiated which items were for who. Um, so some people identify if it's okay to wear or not. Um, in our case, we can answer to our clothing and ours is for everyone. So I, there's also just another comment about having uh, purchasing an item that is made by a non-native woman who has collaborated um, with an indigenous person. And I think that is such a touchy subject. We have, um, well, I think go to indigenous first. Really, I think that's the answer is if you can purchase something from an indigenous maker first, do that. And then, you know, people license their artwork that that does happen and it's licensed in proper ways and uh, it's not wrong. Um, but our advice is to try to seek it out from someone who makes it first, right? Yes, and also just um, as long as it's known that the owner of the company is not Indigenous, but is supporting and also kind of you want to make sure that they're being paid correctly. Um, but there is also Indigenous designers that are making uh, that type of thing available. So yeah, Indigenous first. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to our ready wear and we'll try to answer questions as we go. We can just go through these and um, if anyone else has any other questions, we can answer them as we look. Um, we can just switch the images. So these are part of our ready wear line. This is our bamboo uh, recycled, recycled fleece. fleece poncho and dress set, super cozy. Um, we have a guest model there, Anissa, she's married into our community. Uh, and then myself on the right wearing the gray set uh, super stretchy cozy warm but then uh, your armpits are free <laughs> so you don't get too hot <laughs> and the design is the eagle in the galaxy and we, we can switch <laughs> so actually Amelie and I are wearing this dress right now mm -hmm. and you actually have my daughter wearing the same color that I have on and our other niece is wearing the red one. Such powerful images wearing our supernatural eagle with the killer whale and the sea serpent. And then we have earrings by Gigi's Beads. And we're actually wearing them as well because we love how well her uh, work matches our clothing. <laughs> and she uses really quality uh, materials because we're yeah. super sensitive and they do not bother our ears. So that is really nice. Uh, we can go ahead and move to the next one. Uh, so we here we have our new coat. So this is something new for us. We had a lot of fun creating them. It has our um, eagle spindle whirl with the killer whale on it. Um, it. That artwork is done by our father, William Good. The other one was our brother. Um, this is made out of recycled Dintex. It is waterproof. It is super cozy. Um, our sizes are true to sizing. So we do make sure that we are making clothing for real women. Uh, my sister and I are obviously on opposite spectrums of the size guide and we make things that she can wear and I can wear to make sure that it's just, you know, hugging our curves the right way. Mm -hmm. We can switch. And more of the eagle, killer whale, serpent, the men's Dintex jacket, um, our new tunic. We can switch them a little bit. And quicker. that's my son wearing the men's jacket. So he's 17. Uh, we had It was his first time modeling, but I think it's really important to make sure our kids are active in what we're doing and understand the revitalization process and the decolonization of um, wearable art. We can switch the slide. And the spindle whirl in a dress. I think I have too many slides, so we can go a little bit quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and here's our Coast Salish Couture. It is made right here. Literally, if you could see what it really looked like in here, you would know that it's made here. <laughs> and where we're sitting, this is where we actually create so a lot of our, so. uh, we do create all of our first samples for all of our ready wear as well, right here on this table. Mm -hmm. um, this is where the magic happens. I guess you could say we do, we're all pretty bossy. So it can be a lot of fun. We do boss each other around all day long. Um, but the Coast Salish Couture is really nice to see where 
we can have clothes to dress up in, still be warm, comfortable, and just bring that element of ancient and new, which is something that we absolutely love to do is how can we showcase our family's lineage and history in a positive manner? And that's our niece. We can switch the slide. Brother and sister here. <laughs> So this was, a, these actually, it was really fun to make the men's suit here. Um, I really wanted to, we have a lot of men in our family and we often just dress the ladies. And I really <laughs> wanted to make sure that we dressed uh, the men in the family for all the events that we, well, used to have events to go to, but they're wearing the supernatural um, eagle with the sea serpent for power and transformation along with the killer whale. And that's our brother's artwork. We can move ahead. So this is the same design that you did just see. It's just kind of cut in a different way. And uh, this one. It's a supernatural super eagle. It's, it focuses on the supernatural eagle. Oh yeah, it's a different artwork. Mm -hmm. We can, we can moving. keep moving. Mm -hmm. And then there's a spindle whirl cape. You have to have a spindle whirl cape. <laughs> we can move ahead. So here's a really great resource list. Um, there's a lot happening right now and a few events are only on for a couple of, of more days. So there's a shop indigenous holiday market on Facebook and it was started by some of our friends that are indigenous female entrepreneurs. And they started this private group as a marketplace and it had, I don't know, 300 people or something. And they thought, well, I guess we can't switch it now. We'll keep it private and uh, see what happens. Um, and, and just left it as it was and everyone loaded their albums of all of their, their different products that they sell. And now it's up to like 23,000 members, 22,000 members the last time I checked. And uh, it's really, really popular. And so it's set up with albums. So what you do is you go into the albums and you can scroll through so many vendors and artisans and makers. And it is jam packed with amazing products. Another one is Indigenous Tourism BC Shop. So they've started uh, responsible wish lists uh, supporting their BC artists. And um, that one was pretty neat. Yeah, you can go on that one. So that's through Indigenous Tourism BC. And then the Natoa did, um, they're doing Indigenous Women's Holiday Market where they are listing a company, I believe every day um, between November 3rd to 30th. So you can scroll through and look through some of those um, entrepreneurs. Uh, there's Totem Design House Business located in, ugh, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're located in Colmar. They are, and um, Totem Design House, who's really active in creating and promoting Indigenous First, um, they made up a business list and put it on their Facebook page. And it is massive and it's just growing bigger and bigger. And so that's the link to the list, the current list. There are so many businesses on there that you could support. Um, there's Indigenous Tourism Canada, Indigenous Gift Giving Guide. So check that one out. Uh, Toronto Indigenous Fashion Week Marketplace. So we are actually part of it. Toronto Indigenous Fashion Week tomorrow is our showcase along with some other great Indigenous designers. Um, they also have a shop so you can go on and shop for all of their clothing that they are showing this week in their fashion shows. And that's only until the 29th. So you'll want to make sure you go on to that one. And then in the US, there's the Santa Fe Virtual Indian Market, um, November 27th to December 11th. And there's some amazing works on there too. And is that it? Um, one more. Oh, well, here's just a list of some of our amazing brands. Um, we're missing a few. You Quite could, a few. <laughs> you, could, you could charter a plane from Escuello Air as well, if you were inclined to. Um, or you could purchase um, some beautiful soaps and various different things. So these are just some of the uh, makers that we know and we collaborate with on um, posts. Beautiful. There's and skin, everything from beautiful skin products to sustainable lipstick. Clothing, um, clothing, jewelry, jewelry yeah. just just a music quick and supporting our indigenous music makers. So important. There is absolutely gorgeous music out there. 
uh, representing who we are, our beliefs, our history. And all traumas. their shows are canceled. Yeah, so please support the Indigenous musicians. Um, yes, I don't have Andrea Menard on there either. <laughs> Andrea Menard. Uh, Medicine Song Woman. So there's just so many, and there's so many ways that you can support um, Indigenous First. It, it's endless what you can do to support. And then I think that might, um, here's some of our contact information. So we do have a few minutes if anybody has any more questions for us or wants anything answered or would just like to know a little bit more about us, please go ahead. We are available. Um, we have something in the chat here. I think that's been answered. We updated. Yeah, we're updated. So I'd just like to say hi, so thank you all of my respective people for coming out and listening to such an important um, issue that is with it all over the world right now is Indigenous First and supporting local Indigenous artists. And I hope that we've answered some of your questions. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of who we are and what we do, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we just raise our hands. So hi, Chika. Thank you so much for sharing all your information with us today. Um, so if you do have any questions um, and you can't think of right now, feel free to email me and I could pass it on to Anna Lee and Sophia, or you could also message them directly as well. And I know that we're going to, you're going to be doing a little pop-up shop after this one. Uh, oh you yeah. Talk about it a little bit, everybody? <laughs> I forgot about that. So that's, <laughs> that's just to go on and um, explain the garments because right now, as everyone knows, every, Christmas shows canceled, stores have really limited shopping hours. We can't do, you know, normally we do some kind of open house at Christmas or something where people can come in and look at things. And we thought, well, let's just go live stream on Facebook and give explanations of what we have. And just so you can see them on different styles of bodies as well. So I think, it, well, three styles of bodies, it's just gonna be uh, my daughter and Amelie and myself, but mm -hmm. let's show how our clothes are worn because they're so much softer and more comfortable in real life than they are on just picture. So check it out. We'll be going Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other, what's this Q&A? Yeah. I don't know, I keep oh. pulling that up. Sorry, I'm not as familiar. We're gonna have our sister um, little tit tat now. <laughs> Mary asked, uh, some of your work says customized. How does this work? Uh, so the, if you're looking at a piece of artwork that says customized, chances are it's probably one of our couture items that we would make directly for you. So it would be made to fit your body, your measurements, your height. Um, we, yeah, that's probably what you're looking at on the website. And sometimes we even have to, like, we alter the design of the garment a little bit so that it um, suits the individual better. So we might lengthen it or but that would be modify the couture. It. And that's in the couture when we make a custom made product mm -hmm. for someone. Okay. And that involves measurements and usually fittings. And right now we have restrictions. So we're sort of restricted at the moment when it comes to that. Uh, and then we also have another question. Mm -hmm. um, are your ready to, ready to wear items also produced by yourselves? So we produce our sample. We do our samples here um, at home, and then we have <laughs> them manufactured uh, for us in Vancouver. So we do our original samples, but then everything is manufactured locally for the ready wear. Here's the star. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you. All right. And then we do have um, our ready wear items are in stock on our website too. So we make our products up ahead. We're not uh, made to order. So in for our ready wear items. So you can just go on the website, purchase them. We really don't know what Canada Post is going to be like right now, but we have a few different options on there if people want to order. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> Okay, perfect. I don't know if we have any other questions. Oh, one more actually. Um, how do you find your local artists? Mary asked. We just walk around our home. <laughs> <laughs> so our artists are our family members and everybody is in the same 
um, like lived side by side. So literally we would just go from one house to the other and go find the other person and say, we need this hmm. for oh, shoppers. Uh, she's for shoppers. I would definitely, um, Indigenous Tourism BC has a great list of Indigenous makers and businesses within the territories. Um, so if they have a shop, they will be on that list. So you'll be able to kind of look out by region. Uh, that's a great starting point. Another thing would be maybe go to an Indigenous um, gallery and find out who their local artists are and where, if they have, um, you know, carvers or jewelry makers within their area. And then you can go back to the list that we provided. So I don't know if that's something where it can be put into the chat for people um, with the, all, the, all those links. I'm not sure if we're able to. Uh, what I can do is when I send out the recording, um, I could send out uh, the part of that PowerPoint for everybody, if everybody would like me to do that so that they have all the artists information. And that'll include um, galleries and gift shops in there too that have various different artists. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions unless anybody wants to type them out now before I conclude the webinar. No? Well, thank you so much for joining us today and being a part of this. Oh, we actually do. How about um, blending culture? I have free beading. Uh, can I wear it together? So blending two cultures together, wearing beating and something else from a different culture. I think that's a touchy, um, well, that still comes into the indigenous first, right, idea. Um, but are we referring to like wearing it? Like what yeah. is the context? Cree. Mary, if you want to elaborate, I could give you talking privileges if you'd like to so, talk. So it, like, I guess the question is like, right now we're wearing we're wearing Coast Salish clothing and then we have jewelry by Gigi's Beads. So um, we blend different cultures in the things that we wear, if that's what we're talking about, okay. right? I guess it depends. The Oh, yes, it says yes. So yeah. like- I'll allow her to talk so she could um, ask, ask okay. the question. So give me one second. Go ahead, Mary. Hi, you can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, I have um, like beading that I bought from a Cree artist from, uh, you know, Manitoba area. Would it be okay to wear both cultures together? Yes, it, I, I would think so. Like we're doing that right now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, I just wanted yeah. to check because so, it was. Yeah, I believe Gigi's Bees is Cree. Right? Um, no, she's, I think, uh, Anishinaabe. An Anishinaabe. No, no, no. Let, Let's sorry. double check. Sorry, um, we're supposed to know that. But we are blending two cultures right now. I think um, I personally think it's okay, but then I'm also blended. So I am Irish, English, and Native. Um, I I love who I am, and that is a part of who I am. So I I am Irish. I am English. I do support both. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that same goes like for the respect of wearing different art. Um, art pieces and it really are you following their guidelines is that okay and I think it is okay to wear different jewelry yeah I mean I'm Kukwakawak and Coast Salish and I have Italian and Native Hawaiian ancestry and I love all of them and I wear them differently I have tattoos uh, that are Native Hawaiian so just yeah I think it is okay then yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually do have a question sure. uh, from somebody uh where are your fabulous earrings from oh so that's who we're talking about it's giggy's beads boutique Th um, there is a link for her on our website as well so um giggiesbeads.com and she is um anishinaabe first nations from manitoba living here and um we actually sent her swatches of our collection when we first started um, making the collection and then we would send her images of what we were making and uh, I think she was quite inspired because she made earrings to match different outfits and we had all these amazing earrings for our launch on our video so she did the the earrings on our video perfect okay 
Um, I don't think we have any other more questions. Um, like I said, they are going to be going on, on Facebook for their live uh, pop-up shop. So go on to their uh, website and watch from there. But other than that, I think that is all. So thank you again for joining us here for the webinar. And thank you to Sophia and Anneli for being here today and doing this amazing uh, PowerPoint for us today. So thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.